The big challenge we have is how we can describe and physically demonstrate the complexities of the circular economy. We came up with an initial system diagram that we draw on the wall, which was incredible. And loops and junctions and feedback systems and consequences of actions and reactions. One of the metaphors that came up for circularity was the idea of a train set. You can choose any product between a mobile phone, a sofa, a washing machine or some jeans. So you can choose between designing for a very long life, for recycling, a linear system, so design to just chuck away at the end of life, uh, for leasing or rental, or for remanufacturing. So I'll choose for recycling. The idea of having the design model at the beginning is to convey the idea that the importance of design is really, really seminal to the circular economy. Or the, the decisions that you make as a designer affect the end of life of the product, as 80% of the environmental impact of a product is decided in the design phase. They had to choose a material for their product. They could either use reused, recycled or virgin materials. And because I'm going for design for recycling, I'll use a reused material. Depending on those journeys, you had points taken away or added for recycled materials. You got points reduced because you know you were having to develop new tooling systems. You have to get new accreditations for your materials. There were lots of surprises hidden within the table. There was a whole geopolitical war zone as well that you went through. Because I chose a, a mobile phone, I would get quite affected because most of the rare earth metals that are, we find in mobile phones. We gather from countries which are in conflict, like the Congo. Then choose whether you manufacture things both locally or in different countries. If you went locally, it was more expensive, but there were lots of tax breaks that you were getting points on as well. If you went through the global production route, you got stuck in the ports and you lost points on that because there was a big strike and all your stuff was in container ships. And then there was what we call the action bridge. Before you went over the bridge, you took a consequence card. VAT exception for reused goods, plus 50. If you chose reused materials, which I did, so I won 15 points. Big wins for some and massive point losses for others. According to the decisions you'd made at the beginning as to its design, that would determine the, the manner in which it was disposed of. Because I chose design for recycling, I can only choose between medium or short life. If I had chosen the short one, it would have gone straight into landfill. If you had chosen the longevity route, designed your product for a very long life, your train would go up a small slope and you would enter product heaven. You would reach circular enlightenment and your product would circle round and round and round. It was, a, it was a good way of showing the fact that by designing something for a very long life, at its end of life, it can cycle many, many times, have many, many users and retain its value as well. The game itself is very simple. Behind it is a very complex algorithm-based Excel document which actually works out your score. What you end up with is this incredibly sort of spaghetti junction complexity, which is great because actually it's all well and good when you're having these mad discussions about let's just move from a linear to a circular economy and it's all going to be marvellous and it's really simple, it's going to take us a couple of years to do. But it's not like that at all, it is a spaghetti junction. So that's what we really like, we really like this kind of engaging playfulness at one level backed by some very interesting maths at the back end as well.